Hey guys, gals, everybody. I'm just stopping for a little snack. Um, found a little clear spot in the snow where the trees weren't dripping. So I could uh, pull my trash bag out and throw it down. I like to carry the big 55 gallon construction trash bag, at least one. Um, it's a good emergency thing to carry. It can become a number of things. It can become a sleeping bag. It can become a ground pad. It can become a rain poncho. It could probably almost be enough to make you a small shelter. Although in that situation, I would just pull it up around myself, you know, fill it with, with browse and leaves and things like that to insulate it. It's a good thing to carry. You can also carry water with them. You can make a still with them, a solar still to purify water, even purify your own urine so that it will turn urine into drinkable water because urine is not drinkable. I don't care what anybody says to you. That's foolish. It can cause your kidneys to shut down. It can make you very sick. Okay, and one of these days I will demonstrate how to make a solar still. And with a solar still, you can uh, you need at least one co container and a piece of plastic, dark or clear. And uh, with a solar still, you can purify uh, just about any water and make it drinkable. Just about any fluid and make it drinkable, so long as it's got drinkable water to it. I was taught that by a man named Stan Dancer, who was something of a mentor to me as a child. And he spent at least 23 years that I know of serving this country and teaching young men how to survive in other countries in much worse conditions than I hope I'm ever in. So I take his word as gospel. And uh, thank you. Sincerely. But at any rate, I'm going to have a snack. And uh, I'm going to keep traveling. I was going to stop and make some coffee and have a little sandwich with you guys and stuff. But... As usual, I've gotten a little carried away with my travel, and I'm many miles from the truck, and I decided to circumnavigate a mountain and go up and over to go back. So I have the hardest part still to go, but I've got most of the climb over with, but I've got to get to the top of the mountain and get down the other side to the road, down the road, and down another road to the actual road, if that makes any sense. If not, you'll figure it out on the way out. But at any rate, guys, I know there's a lot of craziness going on out there in the world right now. Things are really uncertain, and we're all having, having to just deal with it as we can go. And all I can tell you is uh, do the best you can. Keep your chin up. Watch out for your family. Stay close to one another, and uh, try to help each other out. Try to try to be uh, try to be a, a cause for the good, and not a cause for the bad. You know, there's going to be people out there who are pushing old ladies down to get the next roll of toilet paper. Be the guy that pushes them down and gives that pack of toilet paper back to the old lady, huh? For me, would you? If not, for yourself, for your kids, for the world? All right. Thank you. Have a good day. We'll see you further down the trail. Welcome to springtime in the Northern California mountains. any rate guys hopefully uh, if you're trapped at home or you're sick you're not feeling good which I don't know too many folks that are but I'm sure some of you out there are not feeling good um, at any rate if you're stuck at home and you got nothing to do I can take you out for a little walk today get you a little fresh air 
get you something to look at. I promise you there won't be too much of this mug on here, ruining all this beautiful footage. goes back and forth from looking like that to looking what I showed you earlier and then uh, eventually a lot of times it'll do something like this where it just dissipates into a draw where there might have been a rolling dip here at one time or a culvert or something and and that road does continue up on that other side of the hill over there on the snowy side of the mountain and I know because I've taken you guys on it several times not too many videos ago we come down that there uh, in those uh, bushcraft snowshoes so it does go over onto that other side of the hill but it you know years and years of, of flooding in the springtime it's all washed out here it's real dangerous to be in the mountains on days like this you you want to stay off some of these steeper slopes because of avalanche and slides and stuff rolling and falling there's going to be a heavy melt today you can see a lot of this snow is fresh uh, sloppy powder so going through the trees is not real fun i'm getting a lot on me but i got my trusty hat wool hat and it, it keeps it off your head man i'm telling you if you don't have a wool hat you just you don't belong out in the woods just my opinion but at any rate we're uh we're out here stomping through all this madness for you folks try to bring you a little something to look at Maybe you can at least feel like you're getting a little fresh air, even if you're not. So keep your chin up, hold your breath. We're all going to come out of this. Well, I can't swear we're all going to come out of this, but whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And you just have to decide you're going to be all right. Because in the end, we can only control what we can control. All right, guys. Here's the unofficial mascot of the show right there. The old cobra plant. We're getting up into the cobra plants. You know you're getting up into SVO country. You know you're high enough. You might run into this old mountain goat. And if you see me out here, they'll say hi. Don't be shy. Cool. That's for my daughter. Even when they're dead, the beauty of the meadow is it's really hard to, hard to miss. Soon this thing will just be popping, full of life and food and flowers. episode just a little fat wood for each episode and this is a beast of a pine tree this is a ponderosa pine 
tell by that puzzle piece bark and those long needles. If I remember correctly, Ponderosa's bunch two or threes, I can't remember. Your good pine's bunch five, your sugar and your white pine, your non-toxic pine. This guy's toxic, you don't want to eat his cambium, you don't want the pine nuts from him, and you, you don't want to make tea with his needles. It's not necessarily known to harm humans, but it causes uh, abortions in cattle, so I am not trying to drink it. At any rate, fatwood. So resin brings either your pine or sap down the tree. Ah, gravity, I say, brings the resin or sap down the tree and it collects in the branches. So the lower the branches, the heavier the resonation, the amberization is going to be in that first six to 12 inches of wood where your fat wood's gonna be. Now this here, switch camera perspectives, would be a fat wood, ooh, slipper snow today guys, be a fat wood log, okay? Give you a little perspective, I cannot wrap my arms around this tree and reach halfway across it. I would take up the time to set the tripod and show you just how huge it is with me and everything, but I have to deal with this because the old SVO has done some walking today. It's been a frustrating few weeks and uh, burning off some, some energy and some frustration and uh, enjoying some mountain scenery again for the first time in quite a while. And it's not like me to be this far away from the forest for this long, guys. So uh, I'll give you a shot of that. That there is a fat wood log. It would be something you could really get burning and popping. This piece from here to here, the it would burn for hours, hours and hours. Ah, she's beautiful, isn't she? Him, her, I don't know. How do you tell tree sex? You even know where you find the pecker on a tree? 